The American robots are here, and they're better than the Russian military in many ways. Video after video, we've seen Russian tanks roasting from Ukrainian fire. Events that, in theory, wouldn't happen if the Russian military had the robotic tanks that the U.S. now has. These robotic tanks could change modern warfare as we know it and reduce casualty rates to the lowest in history, particularly the laser-guided, weapon-wielding M113 tank and every tank born of the Army's robotic combat vehicle program, as those have been in the news lately for all the right reasons. In addition to the Russian setbacks in Ukraine justifying the robotic tanks as smart investments for the United States, these machines have also been in the news for somehow wanting to exist. Their development, tests, and evaluations have gone like clockwork so far. So much so that the U.S. Army is planning to launch a full-system prototype competition next year, one they're willing to spend about $700 million on from 2023 through 2027. In addition to this, the Army will spend $15 million next year to award contracts and evaluate submitted platforms. This is rather poetic progress for a concept that took off with the use of time-worn 60-year-old M113s to then become a full-on Modern Robotic Combat Vehicle, or RCV, program. The RCV program is the Army's latest approach to bringing their robotic dreams to life. The program is expected to birth three RCV models of different weight classes and for different uses, each of which we'll get to in a minute. The RCV program has seven key characteristics to fulfill in all of the resulting vehicles. The first is assured wireless control, where the RCVs have dedicated SEMA resilient data links to their operator control unit, or OCU, and are operable within one half the maximum range of their respective primary weapon. This is a top priority to ensure a human operator has the ultimate say at all times to nip any robot revolution in the bud before it can even begin. Then number two, autonomy, comes in to reduce the required human interaction with the vehicles, allowing them, on receiving the command from the operator, to autonomously move to the probable line of direct fire at relevant speeds while intelligently using terrain, and on getting there, await the command to fire from the operator. Characteristics three and four are growth and modularity. To ensure the vehicles are easily upgradable to swap in new and existing technologies from across multiple military domains, enabling the vehicles to fit perfectly in every mission. All three robotic vehicles will be armed. Therefore, the next requirement is that they can achieve the desired target effects to make firing possible and efficient with any of their onboard or external weapons. External weapons being a separate smaller vehicle, such as a drone, that can be used for overhead targeting. The vehicles must also be able to provide 72 hours of continuous support to their units on full charge and be sustainable, complying with the Army's two-level maintenance concept and condition-based maintenance plus. To develop vehicles that would abide by these seven key characteristics and some other characteristics such as universal data logging and export support, the Army has requested almost $116 million in the 2023 fiscal year budget for research, development, test, and evaluation, or RDT&E, alone. This is quite a significant amount for the RDT&E of a new concept, which only goes to show how much confidence the Army has derived from the success of their original robotic combat vehicle, the M113 tank. The M113 is a fully tracked armored personnel carrier that was developed and produced by the FMC Corporation in the 1960s to transport infantry and other military personnel everywhere. It was the go-to military vehicle for more than 50 nations, including the US, and has fought in more than 30 different wars, making it one of the most widely used armored fighting vehicles of all time. And for decades, the demand for the vehicle only grew so much so that 80,000 units of it were produced. However, the battlefield is different to say the least. And so M113 isn't just as survivable as would be convenient, forcing it to take a backseat for the M2 and M3 Bradleys. But with the M113 still accounting for about half of all US Army military vehicles, it was impossible to just shove them aside. And so the Army got creative with them. The service has been hunting for unmanned ground vehicles for years and on several occasions, used its surplus M113s as surrogates for RCV technologies. The success of the M113 in integrating these technologies 
was brought to light at the Army's recent Edge 22 technology demonstration at Dugway Proving Ground. Here they unveiled a remote weapon station armed with advanced electrical infrastructure, optics, software, and a lethal laser-guided rocket launcher. This remote weapon station was an upgraded M113 hull with a hybrid electric drive to improve fuel efficiency, sensors to provide 360-degree situational awareness to the remote operator, and rubber tracks for reduced weight, vibration, noise, damage to roads, and logistics burden, and also for increased fuel efficiency and ride comfort to the crew inside. The demonstrator is topped with an R-150 weapon station from Electro-Optic Systems that's equipped with a thermal imaging camera and laser rangefinder. This weapon station can mount weapons up to a 50 caliber heavy machine gun, or as we saw at the Edge 22 event, an Arnold Defense four-shot land LGR-4 laser-guided weapon system, a lightweight and reliable weapon system that can provide fire support to both land and sea vehicles. The Land LGR-4 is compatible with 70mm APKWS rockets and has a 100% success rate from up to 6 kilometers away, but extends its operational range to 8 kilometers. An M113 with a level of lethality to dominate the battlefield was a thing of the past, and so this beast of a machine was a surprise to many. But it isn't the only surprise the Army has in store, as their RCV program mentioned earlier is already bearing the fruit of effective RCVs. The less than 10-ton RCV light, 10 to 20-ton RCV medium, and 20 to 30-ton RCV heavy, which we'll refer to as RCVL, RCVM, and RCVH respectively, are the three RCVs under development in the RCV program. All three vehicles will be armed, although the chosen RCVL from Kinetic and Pratt Miller will have significantly limited onboard lethality, as it'll be more of a scout than anything else. The RCV-M and RCV-H, on the other hand, will be escorts for manned next-generation combat vehicles, and still, a whole lot more than that. In January 2020, the Army selected the M5 Ripsaw from How & How Technologies, a division of Textron, as the winner of the RCV-M competition. And one look at this machine makes it easy to see why. It's a mini tank that weighs a fraction of the Abrams tanks, but has 300 more horsepower than the Abrams, and thus can sprint at over 40 miles per hour while carrying up to 8,000 pounds of payload. The M5 has a medium caliber 30 mm automatic cannon as its primary weapon, and it wields a suite of durable systems born out of a partnership between How and How and FLIR systems that help contribute information to build a more accurate common operating picture. These include the Summit 360 from FLIR, which provides seamless EO and IR image composites for 360-degree situational awareness. For internal reconnaissance, surveillance, and target acquisition, or RSTA, the M5 uses a 280 HD gimbal to really reach out and positively ID threats from a distance. For an even further reach, the optionally tethered R80D Sky Raider Unmanned Aerial System, or UAS, can take to the skies. And this UAS isn't the only separately operable component of the M5. A small unmanned ground vehicle, or SUG-V, can ride out of the M5 to provide up to a kilometer of route reconnaissance, investigation of harder-to-reach areas, target interrogation, and pre-warning for the M5. The RCV-H will be the largest of the RCVs and is expected to be as survivable, lethal, and protected as a crewed system. Hence, it will have onboard direct-fire weapon system, such as an automatic cannon and heavy Jagam anti-tank missiles that are capable of defeating all known enemy armored vehicles. It will also wield a defensive armor that protects it from machine gun fire and shrapnel to keep it functioning for as long as necessary as it works in tandem with its manned vehicle counterparts or as part of a robotic platoon to destroy all threat targets. Understandably, being the most complex and least expendable of the RCVs, the Army is yet to pick a design to meet its requirements for the RCV-H, and will likely do so only when the lighter variants have proved to be valuable assets on the battlefield. The RCV family and M113s are only some components of a broader push to integrate unmanned systems into the U.S. Army, but have so far proved to be critical components. Their success could significantly prevent soldiers from a long line of dirty and dangerous tasks, save lives, and save operational costs in the long term. Testing of the vehicles has begun, and according to experts, 
The fastest way to determine their results is by you clicking on the red subscribe button below. This way, the vehicles operate faster. Again, according to experts. Okay, that would be all for now. Thanks for watching.